Presuppositions are truths that you take for granted because of how either the world works or how the language works, typically how the language works. So imagine we have a couple sentences here. Like the first one is, Ben has stopped smoking. There's something about the word stopped that gives a presupposition about the event in the past. So if you say Ben has stopped smoking, unless you interrupt someone and say, no, that's not true, what you have to believe is that Ben smoked at some point in the past. So there's an entailment here that if Ben has stopped smoking, he no longer smokes. But the fact that you say he stopped doing something presupposes the fact that the event has happened in the past. So this is why questions like this aren't allowed in court, because they're kind of like loaded questions. If you say like something like, Ben, when, have you, well, when did you stop smoking? That's kind of a double question. You're asking when it happened, but you're also asking them to confirm the fact that they smoked in the past. That smoking has to be introduced as a fact beforehand before you can ask someone when they actually stopped. There's a case here of, I saw the cow on top of the statue. And there's something interesting about the word the. So with a word like the, whenever you see that word, the is, has a unique property of saying that something exists and it's unique. So if you say, I saw the cow on top of the statue, what you're saying is that there's a unique cow that exists on top of the statue. What you're also presupposing there is that uh, the statue exists. So a couple presuppositions there in that one sentence, but this is a way that you could fool someone. You can say, oh, did you see the unicorn statue? And they'll be like, no, because they're just assuming for knowledge that a unicorn statue exists. You'd have to stop that and say, hold on a second, there is no unicorn statue. So presuppositions are these things that are loaded into sentences that are facts based on our knowledge of language. So one interesting fact about presuppositions is that if we negate a sentence, the presupposition is still maintained. So if we have the sentence, Ben has stopped smoking, and we negate it and we turn it into Ben has not stopped smoking, regardless of whether the sentence is positive or negative, that presupposition still holds. We still have stopped triggering the fact that we expect that Ben smoked in the past. So with implicatures, this does not happen. If you negate an implicature, it's gonna change or it's gonna go away. With presuppositions, this does not happen. So this is the main test for distinguishing between presuppositions and implicatures. So this works, uh, so implicature, that should be a U. So this works for presuppositions, but this does not work for implicatures. Now, there's just a few triggers I wanna talk about. So these are different types of words that trigger presuppositions. So whenever you hear a word like the, what it's doing is it's presupposing uniqueness and existence. So whenever you see the, the expectation is that that thing exists. Factive verbs are another type of trigger. So this would be a sentence like, uh, I know you, uh, let's try, I, I know you were taking a nap. So what this is presupposing is that you were taking a nap. So if you say, I know you were doing something, the word no is presupposing that the event occurred because you wouldn't say that if the event never happened. If you compare it with, I think you were taking a nap, there's no presupposition there because we don't know whether the event happened or not. The speaker is not asserting that, that happened. So you won't get that presupposition with a word like think. The word realized is a lot like the word no. I realized you were taking a nap. Okay, I believe that the event is true, it happened, so I'm presupposing that you were in fact taking a nap. Those are two types of triggers. We do have three more triggers. One of them is the word again. So if I were to give you a sentence like, uh, he's sleeping on the couch again. I can type, I swear. 
Uh, whenever you say the word again, it presupposes that the event happened before. So this presupposes that he's slept on the couch before. Because if you were to say the word again, it's understood that the event had already happened. Because if, you, if it was just happening for the first time, you wouldn't be saying the word again. Clefs are another type of construction. And clefs and questions, actually the next two, are not individual words, but they're rather sentence structures that lead to presuppositions. So I'll use a different color for this one so it doesn't mess with the text. If I say it was Steve that stole the burger, there's an interesting presupposition that comes from this. Because when I say it was Steve that stole the burger, I'm saying that the event happened. I'm claiming in that event that it's Steve who did the one who stole the burger. So the actual presupposition here is that someone stole the burger and the cleft construction is just pointing out the person that did it. So if I negate this, if I say it was not Steve who stole the burger, well, I'm still presupposing that someone stole the burger. I just don't know who it is. So clefts are another type of trigger for a presupposition. And let's just pick another color for this final sentence. Why not? Questions are a good one. Uh, this is the question that I use whenever I teach semantics and pragmatics to, to really get an emotional feeling from people to understand this. And the question I ask them is, why are you so stupid? Because when you're asked this question, you feel something. Why are you so stupid? You, you feel an accusation. And that accusation is the presupposition here. When I ask the question, why are you so stupid? I'm presupposing that you are in fact stupid because I'm asking a question about an event. So I'm assuming the event is true and I'm asking for more details about it. So this can be like why questions or uh, how questions, like how did, you, yeah, how did you come to be president? Well, the expectation of the presupposition there is that now uh, you are president, or maybe were, and you're asking a question about the past. So these questions, these WH questions, are also presupposition triggers, and they assume that the fact that you're asking about is true. So that's it for presuppositions. Starting in the next video, we'll get more into the more mathematical stuff and semantics, but these are the three inference types in the first three videos, entailment, implicature, and presuppositions, as well as the tests for how to distinguish between those. If you have any questions, you know what to do, leave them down below. Thanks for all the usual support, liking, commenting, subscribing, all that fun stuff. I'll see you in the next one.